my goal in what I do is to actually help people. There's an awful lot of frauds and an awful lot of people out there who are in this industry that can see the desperation. They can see that either people have possibly lost their job, lost a loved one to death, or just had a breakup. And they see that desperation and they play off of it. And that's how that's never how I work. That's not how I operate. I joke that I'm a rules girl. I come from that parochial school upbringing. And with all the celebrities that I read for, that I could have been a millionaire by selling some of these stories that only I hear to the tabloids. But I don't. And that's why they keep coming back. And that's why I've got really great clients, really great database of clients who I consider my friends. And I'm so, so grateful for each one of them. Um, I, you know, I, I do every once in a while, I get a skeptic and I don't really want to play the stump the psychic game. I don't really believe that the skeptics that I think that they want to believe, I think everyone sort of wants to believe that there's another side, that when we die, that when we we just don't turn into ash and that's the end of us. So I think that a little bit in each one of us, whether we're a skeptic or a believer, that we really do want that proof. And it's not always going to be there. You don't have proof that you're breathing air, but you breathe the air anyway. So it's important to um, just believe. And that's something, if you saw my office video that you see that I have everywhere, is the believe sign. It's not my job to convince a skeptic. You know, I don't have any problems with reading for them, none at all. And I have to tell you that I would say 99% of them always come back to me. The other 1% is just so tunnel visioned into what they believe. And they're so closed off that it's hard for me to do a read of them anyway. I'm not a mind reader. That's another huge, huge misconception with what a psychic or what a medium is. And there is also a difference between psychic and medium. A psychic is somebody who can predict the future and look at what the, what the past was and what the now is. And a medium is someone that talks to people who have crossed over or who has not crossed over, meaning that they are ghosts and they're still stuck between this and the other side. And I do all of the above. I say I was sort of cursed with all of the clairs. I'm clairvoyant. I'm clairsentient. I'm clairaudient, meaning I can see, feel, and sense. So I'm continuously inundated with what other people really don't see or hear or feel. And it can make you feel a little bit schizo if you're not grounded to this earth. Thankfully, I got a great family. I got a great husband and kids who keep, keep me grounded. Um, I do remember a time when I was working in the real world and I was getting visions and they, at that time, there was an awful lot of natural disasters that were going on and I was sort of predicting a lot of earthquakes and storms and such and not wanting to, but that was the reality of, of what I was going through. And I went to um, the psychiatrist where I was working. I worked in a school district and he handed me a book on psychics and I'll never forget that because I thought that he was going to, you know, say, okay, we got to put you on leave. And I still sort of, you know, said, okay, well, maybe something's wrong with me. Maybe I have a brain tumor. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with me. So I went to a neurologist and had a whole array of tests. And I'm sure that Blue Cross loved that because I was called into his office the next week. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to tell me I have cancer. And he said, Christy, you see dead people. And I'm like, yeah, I do. do. Does that mean that I have a, a brain tumor? And he said, no, it means that you're a medium. And thank goodness I was placed with proper people, good people in my path that didn't, you know, throw me into a padded cell. Um, after I had gotten a divorce um, from my first husband, I'm remarried now, but after I got a divorce, I went to my minister and sort of had a confessional and said that, you know, I, this is what I see and I have since I was a child. And instead of throwing holy water on me, a son of his that the parish didn't know existed came through and he pretty much gave me his blessing after that. 
it was it was a convincing I wish I could do with everyone it doesn't always happen that way though um, I, I don't necessarily conceal bad news from people when I read I tell the good the bad the ugly the only thing that I don't do is death dates unless it's something that needs to be prevented a couple weeks ago I had a dream um, or a vision that one of my clients was going to get into a car accident on the way to my office and this gentleman came through in spirit and he was a big burly guy with red hair and said you have to call him and tell him not to come he can come next week but not this week and, and I said why and he said a white Mustang with blue letters on it is going to run into him and kill him so I obviously I'm like okay I am so sorry you know not that I want to cancel your appointment but I am I I'm not going to tempt destiny. I'm not going to tempt fate. So I think we need to reschedule. Next to my building is a is a restaurant. And after my appointment, right before his appointment would have been, I went to run over there to go get a drink. And right there was the white Ford Mustang, and it said Ford Racing on it. And I choked up and said, okay, maybe I prevented something from happening. I hope I prevented something from happening. And that's the only time that I will say something bad in essence with death around it. So I hope you liked all my videos. I know that it's a lot of information. I haven't even included probably hours and hours of other stuff and other stories. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. This is Christy Robinette of TangleFishings.com.